Welcome back to the JavaScript After Work series. On this episode, I'm doing some array exercises. First, I'm gonna give a shout out to Tiffany Smith. This comment is from the previous JavaScript After Work video. I love this new series. JS feels more approachable when you break down the exercises. Thank you, Tiffany, and I 100% agree, and I am so glad that you're enjoying the new series. Okay, now on to the arrays exercises. Feel free to follow along with me. The link to what I'm working on is in the description. This is called Test Your Skills Arrays, which is part of MDN's JavaScript First Steps module. It says the aim of this skill test is to assess whether you've understood our arrays article. And the arrays article covered a lot of good info on arrays. So this test is to put this into practice. For arrays one, it says, let's start off with some basic array practice. In this task, we'd like you to create an array of three items stored inside a variable called my array. The items can be anything you want. How about your favorite foods or bands? As a quick note, I'll be first testing in my code editor here on the left first, and then I'll paste my solution into MDN's code editor to see the output here as well. So first I'll create the new variable, my array. And then I'll set the value to equal an array. For the array items, I'll do beverages tea, coffee, orange juice, and I'll console log the new variable. And I can see the output with the array items. It says next, modify the first two items in the array using simple bracket notation and assignment. So I need to modify tea and coffee, which are the first two items. And on this process for reference in the JavaScript first steps module, in the arrays section under accessing and modifying array items, it says items in an array are numbered starting from zero. This number is called the items index. So the first item has index zero, the second has index one and so on. You can access individual items in the array using bracket notation and supplying the items index. And these are a couple of examples below that I'm referencing. Example two has an array called shopping and it modifies the array elements stored at an index of zero. And then a gentle reminder note We've said it before, but just as a reminder, computers start counting from zero. Yeah. <laughs> so first I'll target the my array variable. Then use bracket notation to access the first item, which is stored at zero. If I console log this, I can see that my output is the first item, which is T. Now I just need to modify this item. So I'll set it to a new value. I'll set it to lemonade. Now if I console log the my array variable, I can see that the modification from T to lemonade has been made. Oh, that rhymed. Now I'll do basically the same thing for the second item since I need to modify the first two items. So I'll target the my array variable again, then access the item stored at an in index of one, which is the second item. If I console log this, I can see that the output is the second item, which is coffee. And now I will update the value stored here as well. I'll set this one to water. Now I'll console log my, my array again to see the new output.
and I can see that the modification from coffee to water has been made. So these first two items are now modified. It says then add a new item to the beginning of the array. So at the start of my array, I need to add something new. First, I'll target the my array variable. To add a new item to the beginning of the array, I'll use a method called unshift. For reference, the unshift method of array instances adds the specified elements to the beginning of an array and returns the new length of the array. For the syntax, it's unshift, and then the parameters are the elements to add to the front of the array. In this case, I'll only be adding um, one element. So this is the syntax that I'll use. So I'll add in the unshift method. Then for my new array item, I'll make it smoothie. By the way, if I console log this, The method just returns the new length of the array, which is now four items since I've added a new item. So now I'll console log my array again. And I can see that my new item smoothie is now at the beginning of the array. Now I'll test this in MDN's live code editor. and it prints out my final list of items, smoothie, lemonade, water, orange juice. On to arrays two, it says, now let's move on to another task. Here you are provided with a string to work with. We'd like you to one, convert the string into an array, removing the plus characters in the process, save the result in a variable called my array. So MDN provided this string to work with, and I've already pasted this into my code editor. So I'll create the new variable my array. And again, it says to convert the string into an array, removing the plus characters in the process. To convert the value in the my string variable from a string to an array, I'll use a method called split. And for reference, the split method of string values takes a pattern and divides this string into an ordered list of substrings by searching for the pattern, puts the substrings into an array and returns the array. For the syntax, I'll be using this first syntax example. So split and then one parameter, which is the separator. The separator is the pattern describing where each split should occur. The return value is an array of strings split at each point where the separator occurs in the given string. If separator is a non-empty string, the target string is split by all matches of the separator without including separator in the results. So for the my array variable, I'm going to set a value. First, I'll target the my string variable. If I console log this new variable, my array, I can see that it outputs the string. So now I'll convert this into an array while removing the plus characters. In the value of the my array variable, I'll add in the split method to the my string variable, then set the parameter to the separator which is the plus sign character. Now, if I console log my array again, I can now see the string has been converted to an array. Next, it says store the length of the array in a variable called array length. So I'll create a new variable, array length. And for the value, I'll set it to my array and then use the length property which will store the length. I'll console log array length.
and I can see that the output is eight, which is the number of array items stored in my array. And for number three, it says store the last item in the array in a variable called last item. So I need to store the last item, which is Yuri. And by the way, I have moved my panel to the right. In case you noticed, it was getting kind of challenging to show it at the bottom. So figured it'd be easier to move it to the right. Uh, for this last item in the array, this last name, um, I did consult with Google on the pronunciation just in case. So it says the American pronunciation is Yuri. Yuri. And Yuri is a TV character. And I'm not sure which show or anything, but that is the pronunciation I'm gonna go with for this video. So yeah, <laughs> I'm going to add a console log below this for visual purposes to note the length of the array so that it prints out below my array. So a string saying that the length of this array is and then I'll concatenate the array length variable to that. So now I can see my array output as well as the length of the array below that. What I'll do now is check the index of eight to see if it prints out the last item in the array, which is Yuri. So I'll console log the my array variable and then use bracket notation to get the value stored at an index of eight. And I'll add a little note to this as well for visual purposes. The value stored at an index of eight is, and now I'll console log this. And the output is the length of this array is eight and the value stored at an index of eight is undefined. So even though the length of the array is eight, meaning eight array items, the count still starts at zero when you're counting the array items. So zero, one, two, three, et cetera. So technically the last item is stored at an index of seven. So if I change this number to seven and console log again, I'll get the actual last item in the array, which is Yuri. I'm going to add another console log to output the index of Yuri. I'll put in a string the index of Yuri is, and then concatenate with the myArray variable. And I'll use the index of method to get the index number of Yuri. Now, if I run this, the output is the length of this array is eight. The value stored at an index of eight is undefined. The index of Yuri is seven. So this confirms that Yuri is stored at seven in the array. The method I'll use to get the last item is subtract one from the length of the array. So I'll console log only the array length variable. and I can see that the output is eight. And then if I subtract one from array length, the output is seven. So now I'll set up the new variable last item to store the last item in the array. And I'll set the value to equal my array and I'll use bracket notation to access the last item in the array. So I'll add in what I did here, the array length variable minus one to get seven. And this will target the last item, which again is Yuri. So now I'll console log last item 
and the output is the last item, Yuri. So now I'll test this on MDN's code editor. And it prints out the array items, the length of the array, and the last item. Arrays 3 says, for this array task, we provide you with a starting array and you will work in somewhat the opposite direction. So I have this provided starting array copied into my code editor. And I'll console log it. and I can see the output of the array items. First, it says you need to remove the last item in the array. So first I'll target the my array variable. Then for removing the last item, I'll use the pop method. And for reference, the pop method of array instances removes the last element from an array and returns that element. This method changes the length of the array. So on my array, I'll add in the pop method. Now, if I console log my array, the last item, which was Yuri, has been removed. Next, it says add two new names to the end of the array, and I'll target the my array variable again. And to add the two new names to the end of the array, I'll use a method called push. And for reference, the push method of array instances adds the specified elements to the end of an array and returns the new length of the array. The syntax is push and the parameters are the elements to add to the end of the array. Since I'm adding two new items, I'll use this syntax. So I'll add in push on the my array variable and then add the parameters. My two new names will be thing one and thing two. So I'll console log my array again and I can see my two new names added to the end of the array. Next, it says go over each item in the array and add its index number after the name inside parentheses. For example, Ryu zero. Note that we don't teach you how to do this in the arrays article, so you'll have to do some research. In the arrays module, they do briefly talk about accessing every item, and this is using the for of statement. Very often you will want to access every item in the array. You can do this using the for of statement. And they show an example here. There's an array of birds and they use the for of statement to access each bird. And this, this example will simply console log every bird. For the syntax, it's the for keyword and it will take a variable and then the iterable. The variable receives a value from the sequence on each iteration, maybe either a declaration with const, let, or a var, or an assignment target. And then an iterable is an iterable object, the source of the sequence of values on which the loop operates. In this case, it'll be an array. And then a statement, a statement to be executed on every iteration. And this is a live example, an array of letters. There's a variable called element set up here, and then the iterable, which is array one. This will output every element in the array. So if I run this, I can see the output here. It prints each letter. I also like what this article says too. It says in plain English, you can read the above code as for every element in the iterable, run the body of the loop. So in my code editor, I'll create the for of loop. And in here, I'll create a variable called item and then add in the of keyword, then the iterable, which is my array. 
Now I'm set up to run some code on every item in my array. For now, I'll just output the items by adding in a console log. And then the item variable here. So I can see my output of all the array items. And so what I need to do for every item is add its index number after the name inside parentheses. So again, here was MDN's example. So each item needs to be formatted like this. First, I will get the index of each item. So inside the for of loop, I'll target the my array variable and then use the index of method to get the index number of each item. So I'll set the parameter to item. If I console log this, it outputs the index numbers of each array item. I'm going to store this in a new variable. I'll call it item index. Now that I have the index numbers, I just need to also have the names output next to the numbers as well, and also put the numbers in parentheses. First, I'm going to console log the item variable again. And I'm going to format this as a template literal because it'll be easier to combine in the parentheses later. So here are my names. Now I'll add the item index variable. So it will output alongside the name. and I'll console log that. Now the index number is there for every name. So I just need to add the parentheses around the item index variable and run this again. Now the output is formatted per the example. So I'll store this in a new variable I'll call it new item. Now, if I console log my array, it doesn't print the name plus index number because I still need to assign each array item to the new item formatting. So in the for of statement, I'll target the my array variable. For every item, I want this new format to apply. So I'll use bracket notation to access the item. I'll insert the item index variable that I set up earlier to access the item at the particular index. So now for every iteration of this loop, it can now apply whatever change to the item at the particular index once I set it up. I'm going to console log this. and it outputs all the names. So now I'll set it to change each element to the new formatting I set up in the new item variable. So I'll set this to equal new item so that every item displays as the item, item index format. And I'll console log this. and I can see that it outputs the new format. Now, if I console log my array, it outputs the new format. Number four says, finally join the array items together in a single string called my string with a separator of dash. So they want these items now joined in a single string and then separated by a dash. So I'll create the new variable, my string. Then I'll set the value to my array. To join the items together, I'll use the join method. And for reference, the join method of array instances 
creates and returns a new string by concatenating all of the elements in this array separated by commas or a specified separator string. If the array has only one item, then that item will be returned without using the separator. The syntax is join and either leave the parameter blank or set one. The separator is optional, a string to separate each pair of adjacent elements of the array. If omitted, the array elements are separated with a comma and the return value, a string with all array elements joined. If array.length is zero, the empty string is returned. So in the my string variable, I'll add the join method to the my array variable. And now my separator, which is a dash. Now I'll console log my string. And I can see my output, which is the array items as a single string and join together with a dash. I'll now test this in MDN's live code editor. Add your code here. And it outputs the value of my string. By the way, after recording this video, I input my solution for this one into chat GPT to get feedback, mainly on the for of loop. It said, nice work on tackling the array manipulation task. Your approach involves and it details my solution. And here is the feedback that there might be an issue with the approach when using index of inside the loop. The index of method finds the first occurrence of an, an item in the array. In this case, if there are duplicate items, it might not give the correct index. A better approach might involve using the map method or a traditional for loop with an index. And it gives an example of how I could have updated it. So map is the better approach on this. Initially, I went with the for of loop since it was something I learned in this module and I wanted to try it out. But more details from ChatGPT on this. It says using a for of loop isn't inherently wrong for iterating through an array. However, in the context of the specific tasks you mentioned, adding indices after each item using a for loop, for of loop might not be the most suitable because Directly obtaining the index while using for of loop isn't straightforward without employing additional variables. The for of loop is excellent for iterating through elements, but in cases where you need the index of the current element, a traditional for loop often provides better control and direct access to the index. In the given task, if you specifically prefer using a for of loop, you might need to combine it with other variables such as ma maintaining a counter. So this is what I learned regarding the for of loop. It's not the best approach when you need accurate indexing such as from this ex exercise. Finally, arrays four. It says for this array task, we provide you with a starting array listing the names of some birds. And I have the starting array here in my code editor. It says find the index of the eagles item and use that to remove the eagles item. So first I'll find the index of eagles. So I'll create a new variable eagles index. I'm going to set the value to target the birds array. And I'll use the index of method to find the index of the item. And I'll set the parameter to eagles. And I'm going to console log the new variable, eagles index. And I see that the index is two. And now I need to remove eagles from the array. And for that, I'll use the splice method. For reference, the splice method of array instances changes the contents of an array by removing or replacing existing elements and or adding new elements in place. The syntax is splice, and there are different parameters that can be used. So start will need to be specified as a parameter, but there are additional ones like delete count and adding in items. So start is a zero based index at which to start changing the array. And then there's delete count, which is an integer indicating the number of elements in the array to remove from start. 
And then another optional parameter is adding items, the elements to add to the array beginning from start. And the return value for this is an array containing the deleted elements. If only one element is removed, an array of one element is returned. If no elements are removed, an empty array is returned. So I'll be using the syntax where I also specify the delete count along with the start. So I'll target the birds array, then add in the splice method. So adding in the first parameter, I want the start to be the index of eagles, which I've stored in the eagles index variable. Now the second parameter, the number of elements to remove, which is one. If I console log this, I can see that the output is only eagles, which is what I need. Now, if I console log the birds array, it now outputs the array without eagles. Next, it says make a new array from this one called eBirds that contains only birds from the original array whose names begin with the letter E. Note that starts with is a great way to check whether a string starts with a given character. If it works, you should see emus, comma, egrets appear in the page. For this, I'm going to create a new variable, eBirds, and set the value to an empty array. What I wanna do is put into this new array only birds that start with the letter E from the birds array. So first I will create a for of loop to loop over the items in the birds array. In here, I'll create a variable item for the array elements and I'll add in the of keyword, then the array variable birds, which is the iterable. As MDN suggested, I'm going to use the starts with method to identify only the bird starting with E. I'll approach this by using a conditional if statement inside of the for of loop. For reference, the if else statement executes a statement if a specified condition is truly, if the condition is falsy, another statement in the optional else clause will be executed. The syntax is if, and then specify a condition and statement, and below that is the syntax if there will be an else statement. Condition is an expression that is considered to be either truly or faulty, and statement is the statement that is executed if condition is truly. In this case, I'll just have an if statement, so I'll be using this syntax. So I'll create the if statement in my for loop. Now I'll add in the condition. And here I want to check if the item at the iteration starts with the letter E. So I'll add in the item variable and then use the starts with method. And for the parameter, the letter E to check for that. Now I'll console log to check the output for this condition. So I'll console log that item. And I can see that this output returns the bird starting with E from the birds array. As a reminder, eagles was removed earlier, so that will not show for the final output. Now I'll need to add in the statement to be executed on the iterations where the condition is found to be true. And I want to put these birds into the eBirds array. So in my if statement, I'll target the eBirds array. To add the elements to the eBirds array, when the condition is true, I'll use the push method to add the item to the array. And I'll set the parameter as item to add the array item when the condition is met. Now I'll console log the new eBirds array. And now the output of this array is birds only starting with the letter E, of course, minus eagles. Now I'll test this in MDN's live code editor. And it outputs the items in the new eBirds array. Okay, so that completes the arrays exercises. I hope you enjoyed and see you in the next video.